And a little bird told me this. I didn't see this myself, but Mrs. M was telling me that there was some talk about a co-housing project. Groups of uh, expats, immigrants, foreigners coming in and buying together. And I understand you were part of a, the sort of consultation uh, input on that, the analysis mm -hmm. of the project. Mm -hmm. It sounds like such a good idea, Anna, that you know, groups of foreigners would come in. Um, the, one, the not so wealthy ones, if you like, not the super rich or the very rich. They would pull their resources they would live in a non-nuclear family sort of way where there might be a building with a number of units or a piece of land with a number of units on. They would put their money in together. They could share resources, couldn't they? They could share tools, uh, utility equipment, lawnmowers, all these things that not every family needs to have, but a group group of people could have you could have young people with children you could have older people who have a sense of community living together in this co-housing sort of way how's it looking i think those kind of i love those kinds of projects honestly i think they are right. great and they are one of the best things for community building uh from a technical perspective they can be quite tricky because it depends yeah. on how that investment goes about so probably the best and easiest way to do it is that one of the persons buy things and then sells to the others, because if they actually buy okay. all together, it's going to be a legal mess. So and the banks are not going to like it. So that's definitely a factor okay. when thinking about that project. But from a, a social and a, an entrepreneurship perspective, I love those projects. From a technical perspective, like I said, they can be a bit of a headache. But uh, I, am, I actually, besides uh, Josh that's developing the, um, uh, a project like this right now, uh, and I'm working with him on that, actually next week we're probably going to meet and move forward. So I don't know if I should be okay. announcing those things. So I'm not going to say a lot. <laughs> um, and um, I have actually two other clients that are doing similar things, but they are, oh. um, they are the investors. So my, I have two other clients that want to build communities. One of them already bought a lovely, uh, property in Porto and she's going to do be doing a, a rental community in that property and I have a, a very very big project that's um, about 160 apartments in total uh, and I love the concept and my client the idea is exactly to do what Bobby was saying so basically to create um, offer that is possible and attractive for local residents and also attractive for foreigners. So in this project, the idea is to build a mixed community where you have some higher end apartments that are very attractive for the um, wealthy investors and uh, the wealth and foreign residents, and then have also a mix of affordable housing and kind of control the the sale so not everything is bought for by foreigners and there is actually a balance between portuguese people and foreign people and creating a balanced community around that and i love those kinds of things because i believe that the segregation of social status is one of the social problems that kind of needs to be addressed or at least start going against that the whole thing of you have this rich neighborhood and a poor neighborhood and I think it's really good to kind of mix the two and have different perspectives come together. And I believe everyone is able to grow and learn from that. Oh, this is music to my ears. You too, Bobby and Savika Anna talking incredible blue sky thinking. But it's not just blue skies. You're both actually doing it, which is fantastic. Bobby's approach to Herdad de Mayo is, is, is wonderful in, in how he's aiming to build community as one of the the um the pillars sort of metaphorically literally of the of the project is to be integrated into the local community infrastructure on the site will be used by the whole community not just by a gated community of people living there and you're talking along very similar lines so i'm very proud to to know you both and to feature mm -hmm. you on the show here that sounds wonderful anna and um, how's that going down in in the portuguese real estate industry uh friends and family you talk to do they think you're crazy with these new ideas or is oh. that just how portuguese people used to live anyway <laughs> So actually, uh, that's the thing. I actually did most. Uh, I built most of my uh, company without my family really knowing what I was doing because I was really tired of the naysaying. 
it's the whole okay. risk worse thing and how that's never going to work out so at some point i yeah. just uh gave up telling them what i was doing it and i was just doing it and then when i did it i was like oh look i did this <laughs> kind of attitude <laughs> but well, that's, that's amazing. definitely well, something frustrating <laughs> because yeah yeah okay. i i actually I had more support from the things i was doing outside than inside Amazing, amazing. However, is it fair to say that the idea of um, generations living together uh, on the same site is actually quite a tra traditional Portuguese thing to do? You know, those um, the, you see those houses where they're split level or mm -hmm. there's a granny annex or something like that. Portuguese people aren't averse, are they, to sharing uh, living with other generations and maybe more distant family members like cousins and aunties and uncles and so on? Yes, that's particularly traditional from the more interior locations where families stay very tight together. And sometimes mm. even in the in the, the same property, like you were saying, that it's fairly common to see these kind of divided properties where different generations from the same family live. Um, but yes, that's more uh, of an interior thing. And I do think it has its pros and cons because it kind of tends to create... Um, a barrier where people kind of are uh they have to stay close to family so once again they don't really go outside of that uh comfort zone so it yes. it does have its pros and cons understood but I, I guess with the the version of it you're talking about if you're talking about mixing with non-family members and people from different cultures my goodness that of course will bring pros and cons but it might bring some very good, good pros with it as well so how exciting do please keep us up to date with all of this i'm sure there are gumpers people part of our community be very interested in getting involved with what you're doing and i in in work i've done in the past in the uk uh, anna I work with something called the Living Village Trust, which was a sustainable housing development, but very much with a view to having people create a community where they live and not just dormitory blocks um, where they where they just sleep and then go out to work. There's definitely work to be done in this department and there are some really good ideas.